so we are uh, still talking about the fundamentals of uh, heat transfer and what we have seen is we have so we have looked on the fundamental concepts and those concepts were related to conduction and uh, convection till this point now uh, we would extend that discussion to radiation okay this is the third mode of heat transfer and this is the only mode of heat transfer which does not require any kind of medium from your elementary course in physics you know that okay now if you just look at the definition this radiation is the energy emitted by matter in the form of electromagnetic waves or photons i hope you uh, remember something like wave particle theory and things like that right so this is something related to the, that one if you want to look at the physics or the chemistry behind all that so those are the theories but in the form of electromagnetic waves or photons as a result of changes in the electronic configurations of the atoms or molecules you remember if 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 the electron jumps from one orbit to the other one it would emit energy or it would absorb energy okay so that's how these radiations are emitted and all kinds of bodies they emit these radiations whether it's a gas or a liquid or a solid object it would emit radiation okay now technically any body which is having a surface temperature above absolute zero now what do you mean by above absolute zero this is minus 273 kelvin okay so i'm sorry this is degree centigrade 270 degree centigrade so they emit thermal radiation okay so generally this is kind of an absolute zero but it is not possible this is just an ideal condition scientists could not achieve it till this point okay they 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 are trying to go closer and closer but still this is unachievable so this you already know this is the basic characteristic that the radiation does not require the presence of any intervening medium and if there is its efficiency would be affected like if there is no medium radiation heat transfer would be more efficient so radiation heat transfer can be more efficient in vacuum or space and if it enters the air you know you know the atmospheric boundary layer where you might have seen the effect of ozone on the intensity of the radiations which are entering into the earth layer right so this is something which affects the intensity or the efficiency of the radiative heat transfer from the sun to the earth right so in space it is the most effective sorry medium sorry no it is not medium dependent medium dependent there are only two modes conduction and convection no efficiency means effectiveness i am not strictly defining the efficiency this is effectiveness right effectiveness of the heat transfer so you might have seen that the direct sunlight this is more intense if the ozone is not there the direct sunlight can be more intense so it is i am just talking in that sense right so it's a crude uh, term for qualitative analysis of effectiveness i would talk about different parameters which are related to the radiation okay those there are three uh, generally parameters one is how the body absorbs the radiation one is how the body emits the radiation and how the body transmits the radiation okay so there are three kinds of interaction between the waves which are being placed on a surface of a body 
with with the waves right so there are three kinds of interaction one either the body emits the radiation or it absorbs the radiation and third it it can transmit the radiation as well okay now let's talk about these properties one by one the first one is the emissivity property emissivity property means this is about the emission of radiation from the body surface so radiation emitted by the surface originates from the thermal energy of matter thermal energy of the matter you know it's a, a kind of characteristic for the uh, motion of the molecules kinetic energy of the molecules by the surface and the rate at which energy is released per unit area you see this is energy is released per unit area right so the relation which i am going to define that would be defined per unit area so that is kind of a measure of flux so per unit area is termed as the surface emissive power you know what is this power this is rate of change of energy per unit time okay so the idealized surface that emits radiation at this maximum rate so the maximum rate can be possible but that is only possible if you have a black body you should hear this term before before this class right so that there is a black body which is an ideal body and that ideal body is assumed to be uh, emitting the maximum power out of its surface which which can be possible the maximum one right so this is also known as an ideal radiator that black body is also known as an ideal radiator so this is the relation which defines rate of energy emitted from the surface per unit area this is what this is rate of energy rate of energy emission per unit area through radiation okay and this is known as stephen boltzmann law this is known as stephen boltzmann law remember this is mentioned in kelvin you should not use degree centigrade in this relation this relation has been defined for the absolute scale which is the kelvin right if you put this ts which is the surface temperature of the body ts means the surface temperature of the body if you put it in degree centigrade this relation would not be valid so you should use this measure in kelvin and this sigma is known as stephen boltzmann constant and this is its value 5.67 into 10 raised power minus 8 watt per meter square kelvin raised to power 4 now you should be very careful about the units now in all engineering subjects and in this one particularly you should be very careful you should see what kind of constant are you using for example if there is kelvin you should use kelvin over there right so this is something which is the importance of the units and you know what can be the disaster if you do not follow this so please be very careful about the employment of the units systems they should be, they should be consistent so this table just shows uh, the emissivity of different materials let me define the emissivity first and then i would move on this is the heat flux emitted by a real surface is less than that of a black body you know that because black body is an ideal radiator so any real body would emit power less than that of the ideal body okay so in that case if you want to find out emissive emissivity power of a real body you need to multiply this quantity with this parameter this epsilon this is known as emissivity sorry why the black body is an ideal radiator so i would not uh, i think i am not the best person to answer that question because this question may be answered by some physicist right because there should be some uh what should i say because this thing is related with the wavelengths you might have remembered the uh, wavelength pattern for different kind of radiations electromagnetic ultraviolet and all that kind of thing so i th i think i i would not be able to answer this question but still you may find some physicist in the from the physics department 
who can answer this question but anyways come back coming back to my point this emissivity can be from 0 to 1 if the emissivity is 1 you would have an ideal radiator so you see emissivity would improve if you polish the surface well emissivity would improve if the if you polish the surface well so it depends on the surface finish as well now let me go back to this chart you see this aluminum foil is having an emissivity of 0.07 anodized aluminum 0.82 and you can see that the people are trying to approach one but they are not very close to one they are not basically approaching the exactly one value okay so now the point is you know what is one characteristic this is about what this is emissivity how the radiations are emitted from the surface of the body and the second property is how the radiations are absorbed or they are incident on a body like for example if you look at this body this is being placed in a shell this is the shell kind of thing it may be an atmosphere it may be room it may be uh, the walls of a furnace anything right so this body has been placed in this nutshell this is radiating some kind of energy and obviously some energy would be radiated from this surface and that those waves would be incident on this body okay those waves would be incident on this body so this property is known as irradiation you see irrespective of the source we designate the rate at which all such radiation is incident on a unit area of the surface remember these heat transfer rates are being defined per unit area okay so on a unit area of surface is known as irradiation and this is represented as g so let's say if g quantity is being placed on this body is being uh, basically is an is incident on this body so some of the radiations would be absorbed and some of the radiations would be transmitted isn't it if the surface is opaque opaque means it is not transparent so if it is not transparent it would not let any uh, wavelength go through it either it would reflect it or it would absorb it or it would let it transmit through it okay so there are basically these two parameters which we are going to use we we can look at the reflectivity as well but right now i am just interested in these two things so a unit area of the surface as the irradiation g and this is defined as this relation alpha g this absolute alpha is something which is the most ideal one which can be related to an ideal uh, absorber this alpha is a quantity which is known as absorptivity again it is one right so this is something which which you uh, uh, how you use the these things okay now the point is if i ask you that there is a quantity g which has been incident on a plate from the atmosphere or let's say from the furnace there should be some quantity which should be absorbed and there should be some quantity which needs to be transmitted okay please remember this thing how you can use these relations i would solve one or two examples at the end right now value of absorptivity depends on the nature of the irradiation as well as on the surface itself it means this absorptivity value depends on the source for example if there is sun or let's say that irradiation is due to uh, some uh, body which is placed nearby right so it depends on the source irradiation as well as on the surface itself like the surface which is used as uh, the sink of for those radiations which is kind of attracting those kind of radiations okay it might have something to do with the crystal structure which you see on the surface okay because it's all related with the atomic activity electronic activity 
so it, it it may depend on that thing okay now this is just a side note liquids can be considered as opaque to radiations liquids can be considered although they transmit radiations but still they can be just considered opaque to radiations and gases can be considered transparent to it like for example if someone says that th there is a gas used for some application and there is some kind of radiation so what you need to look at only the transparent portion the transmitted portion if you are looking at the liquid so what kind of radiation you should consider the radiation interactive inter interaction that should be based upon the absorptivity okay and same is the case for solid now a special case that occurs frequently involves radiation exchange between a small surface and much larger isothermal surface now this is very important isothermal surface like for example what do you mean by isothermal <laughs> at the same temperature like for example if i say that there is a body placed within this room and i want to see what kind of waves are incident on that body from these walls so what i would say is i would use the same temperature for the complete wall the same time for all these four walls and the roof the same temperature so these surfaces would be considered as isothermal for example if you go outside in the atmospheric boundary layer and there is some person or some building and you want to see the radiative interaction with the atmosphere so what you would consider the whole atmosphere at the same temperature okay this is how you look at the body they can they can but for assumption or to a very considerable extent you can consider them as opaque right so you can say the major part of the radiation is gone to some other purpose right and very less they are uh, allowed to pass through it now similarly the surrounding could be the walls of a room or a furnace whose temperature differs from that of an enclosed surface obviously this is very important because we are going to use these two temperatures the temperature of the surface and the temperature of the enclosed body generally you would represent this temperature as t sub s u r enclosing surface and this temperature would be known as t s okay so please remember these two notations t surface and t s now now i am going to use this relationship for defining the net interaction with the radiative heat transfer net interaction with the surrounding of any body with the radiative heat transfer so if the surface is amused to uh, is assumed to be the one for which alpha is equal to epsilon alpha equals epsilon now what does that mean absorptivity is equal to emissivity okay so this is known as a gray surface i am sorry for that i don't know what is happening with it okay so that kind of body is known as a gray surface right now i have all already told you what kind of radiative interaction can be there either the body can emit the radiations or it can absorb the radiations okay so for example if you want to look at the total interaction absorption is something which is coming into the system and emission is something which is going out of the system right so net would be what difference of both the quantities difference of both the quantities generally whenever you talk about this q radiate radiative so it means you are talking about the heat or the radiation emitted from the body minus it has obtained from the other surfaces okay so what you see is this first term is representing what the radiations being emitted by the i'm sorry this is ts raised to power 4 so this should be what radiations emitted from the body and this this is radiations absorbed by the body which are coming on to it from the surroundings so for example how can you define this quantity this quantity is generally defined as
this one. I am not going into the proof once we talk about the complete uh, topic specific to the radiation we go into the detail we can do the proof at that time but right now I am just using this relationship G equals sigma T surface raised to power 4. Now you can, can you find out any kind of connectivity with the Stephen Boltzmann law? Now what is the radiation which is basically incident upon somebody? Obviously the radiation is emitted from the outer surface, right? And if that outer surface is at a temperature T sub surface, so obviously Stephen Boltzmann law can be used to find out its emitted power. So this is what sigma T surface 4. So this is just a physical kind of interpretation for this relation. So if you use it, this epsilon, I, I think this, this should not be E, this should be sigma. Epsilon sigma TS4, which is the emitted radiation by the body minus what? alpha sigma t surface 4 right so what you can obtain is you can these qu two quantities are equal for a gray surface these two quantities are equal so obviously you can take epsilon and sigma out of these equations and this would become ts4 minus t surface 4 understood so this is quite easy. But the point is, I would use this slide to write down few important points. Now what you have come up with is net radiative heat transfer is equal to what? Epsilon sigma TS4 minus T surface. Four. I hope you can be uh, able to distinguish between two, these two temperatures. This is what? This is the temperature of the surrounding and this is the temperature of the actual body. Okay. How can I write it down? I can write it down as T surface square plus T surface square T S square minus T surface square. I can write it down like this. Right? Similarly, I can further extend it T surface square You see, now if I see, if I say that this quantity is a form of radiative heat transfer and I represent it as H. You remember Newton's law of cooling? What was that? That was equal to H. What? Okay. Now you see this is Ts minus T infinity, but there is Ts minus T surface. So generally in some of the engineering applications or some of the engineering documentation, what you see is this quantity is represented by H radiative. And you can see that it is a very strong function of temperature. But this H is not a very strong function. It is a weak function of temperature. So you can say that its dependence on temperature is weak. The H for convection, its temperature, is, its dependence on temperature is weak. So it is a weak function of temperature. Okay, so that is the difference. So if someone asks you what is H for radiative heat transfer, you need to find out this quantity. And there is just an analogy between these two. Now both, both temperatures. This is for Ts and this is for T surface. You see, in this complete expression, you can find out S and surface the body and the surrounding both are there. So H is dependent on both of those temperatures. 
right okay <coughs> let's solve this uh, example an uninsulated steam pipe what do you mean by uninsulated heat transfer is possible if that is insulated it means no heat transfer is possible okay so an uninsulated steam pipe passes through the a room in which the air and walls are at 25 degree centigrade now you see from the schematic you can say that these surroundings they, these walls they are at a temperature of 25 degree centigrade and the air which is having temperature t infinity this is also at a temperature of 25 degree centigrade the outside diameter of the pipe is 70 mm this is talking about outside diameter and its surface temperature and emissivity are 200 degree centigrade and 0.8 respectively what are the surface emissive power and air radiation this is quite straightforward so how can you define emissive power of a surface epsilon sigma ps4 now you know what is this value 5.67 into 10 is power minus 4 i think watt per meter square per kelvin that is the unit okay and similarly this ts needs to be in kelvin so if this temperature is 200 degree centigrade what would be the kelvin okay so use this one and you know what is emissivity this epsilon is emissivity right so you would get this relation with some magnitude and the units are watt should it be watt or watt per meter square this should be watt per meter square i told you that this quantity has been defined per unit area okay that quantity has been defined per unit area so that is why this is watt per meter square so if i ask you that you need to find out the radiative heat transfer or let's say the em 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 uh, emitted power from the whole surface of the body what you need to do you need to multiply this quantity with the surface area of the cylinder okay and what would be the air radiation air radiation is what and how can you find out this g air radiation is what by the way those waves which are incident on the body so those waves which are being emitted by the surrounding surface and they are incident on the body right so what are the waves which are uh, in basically emitted from the surrounding body those are sigma 4 isn't it you understand that why did i use this expression for air radiation come on i told you why because those are the waves which are emitted from the surrounding body so that is why i am using a form of the stephen boltzmann law to find out the waves incident upon the body why because those waves which are incident upon the body they are being emitted by the surrounding surface okay so this is why i used it so anyways i just want to uh, highlight these few points by this example now let's talk about the second part if the coefficient associated with the free convection heat transfer from the surface to the air is 15 watt per meter square now what do you mean by free now what can you uh, no no i i'm talking about the free convection heat transfer what do you mean by it what no it's not forced it is not forced there is no fan at all whatever is happening it is happening on its own there is no motion which has been created or let's say there is no motion uh, given by some source of the kinetic energy to the fluid okay what is the rate of heat loss from the surface per unit length of pipe now for example if i talk about the total heat loss if i talk about the total heat loss from the body what kind of heat losses are there yes there there is basically convective heat transfer and radiative heat transfer why because energy has been lost from the surface to the surrounding by two methods one is convection and the other one is 
radiation right so if something happens within con condu uh, by conduction it would happen within the body it would happen let's say from one surface of the body to the other sur surface we are talking about something which is a heat loss from the body so loss is always from the body to the surrounding okay so for from the body to the surrounding it it has something with uh, let's say q convection plus q radiation and that too for emission only okay N not the emission only i think that should be we should consider those which are being uh, which are incident on the body as well so this this should be net radiative heat transfer okay so you you can find out this q convection can you find out this q convection by which law newton's, newton's law of cooling so this is h a t s minus t infinity and this is what this should be included with emittive minus what absorb you understand that and these quantities they needs to be multiplied by area as well why because these two quantities are calculated or those expressions or the governing laws for these two quantities are given as something per unit area okay so please use these three terms you know the values and you can find out the numerical value for it but my point is you want to look at the final answer per unit length of pipe so once you find it out just divide it by l finally okay then it would be so final answer would be given in some magnitude watt per meter so i repeat please be very careful about the units of these quantities they can be very confusing because you need to use so many tables in this course so they can be confusing okay please make sure that the units are consistent in any numerical problem or in any engineering calculation okay now just one point which i want to highlight regarding uh the analogy between the free body diagram in statics or let's say in mechanics of materials course with these free body diagrams so in those courses what you do is in statics or dynamics or free mechanics of materials what you do is you isolate the system from the surrounding and then you apply what forces all the forces which are applied by the surrounding on the system you you indicate those kind of forces and then you apply newton's law sigma f equals ma in this case what you would do is you would isolate the system from the surrounding and you would show all the energy interaction with the surrounding energy interaction means heat transfer and that can be through radiation and that can be through convection and the second thing is you also need to see whether some work is being done on the body or not or let's say is there any kind of generation of heat or any kind of other energy within the system or not how many uh, energy interactions or energy terms are possible for for a system there are four you remember we talked about uh, stored generated and what which is entering the system and which is going out the system okay so these are basically few types of energy terms you need to look at that so i would stop at this point i would also solve this example uh, just just remember this point and we would start from this point onwards in the next lecture okay